Okay, so welcome to this next video in the uh, playlist on the theory of probability. Uh, in this video what we're going to do is continue our discussion of covariance, and we're going to see uh, the other use of covariance. So, uh, we said that firstly one of the uses for of covariance was as this measure of correlation, but another use of covariance was in working out what the variance of a sum was. So, uh, we uh, discussed how to work, uh, how basically uh, the uh, variance the sum of random variables could be forced, it could be, um, was equal to uh, the, vari the sum of the variances of the individual components of the um, sum, uh, plus uh, all those cross terms of covariance, and I will remind you of that when we come to it. Uh, but the problem we're going to take on is uh, the problem of calculating the variance of the hypergeometric distribution, and we're going to see how to do it using covariance, variance of the hypergeometric distribution is the topic uh, for this video. Okay, so I'm going to firstly just remind you of what the hypergeometric distribution is, uh, because it was quite a while ago since we did it. So let's say we have a random variable, um, x, which is hypergeometrically distributed, so you write hgog on, uh, hypergeometrically, obviously, and you need three parameters. There are three parameters in the hypergeometric distribution, and we'll give them the parameters w, uh, b, n. Okay, and uh, the setup basically is this. Uh, if you recall, um, the question that motivates the hypergeometric distribution is a simple one. You have a bag here, let's say a bag, and it's full of marbles, and there are two coloured marbles in here. So let's say there are white marbles, and there are black marbles. So these are the white marbles, so they have no full uh, fill, and uh, here are the black marbles here. Okay, so you have a bag containing white and black marbles, and uh, the number of white marbles in the bag is W. So you have W white marbles, so W could equal 10, in this case in the picture it would equal 4, and the number of black marbles is this B. So these are two parameters in the hypergeometric distribution telling you how many white marbles you have and how many black marbles you have. Uh, so black in this case would be 5 for this picture. And then, uh, the little m, the final parameter here, is the number of marbles that you take from the bag. Number of marbles which you ch take, which you pick. So the problem is this, which you pick. Okay, so the problem is this. Uh, if you pick n marbles from this bag and you do it at random, what is the probability that you get a certain number of white marbles? So what we would like to know is, uh, here is all the possible outcomes. So let's say this is the probability space, uh, the, well, the sample space with a probability uh, measure defined on it. Uh, so this is the sample space containing all possible outcomes. So all the possible outcomes of picking n balls uh, go here. So for instance, you could pick a white ball, you could pick a black marble, um, a black marble, uh, there, another black marble, etc. And you obviously pick out all n of them. So let's say we've gone up to n. So in this case, n was 5. But uh, more generally, n can be any number you want. Um, OK, and we are assuming that w and b are going to be greater than n, so that uh, it makes it slightly more difficult if w and b aren't greater than n, uh, because in that case, obviously, uh, you cannot get uh, the outcome that you get all white marbles if you don't have as many white marbles as you're picking out. So if n is greater than w, uh, then you cannot pick out n white marbles, in which case it gets slightly more complicated. Um, to, uh, it, the intuition gets slightly more complicated. So we'll just uh, think about w and b being greater than n for this case. Okay, uh, so number of uh, mar marbles which you pick out is n, and uh, we have all of these outcomes in a sample space here, and we have this random variable x, which is going to ascribe to each outcome a uh, real number between 0, 1, 2, 3, and it can go all the way up to n, and it's going to ascribe to every outcome, so this is an outcome here, it's going to ascribe to an outcome, which I'll just call little s, it's going to ascribe, uh, it's going to map it onto the number of white marbles you pick, of white marbles you picked. So what we would like to know 
is uh, what is the probability that this big X, this random variable big X, is equal to some little x, i.e. what is the probability that you pick one right, uh, white marble, what is the probability that big X is equal to one? Uh, so uh, in that case, little x would be equal to one. Uh, and, we can ask, and we would like the probability mass function for this probability to, uh, space. So this probability space, remember, the meaning of this being a random variable is that this probability space is going to inherit the probability space structure on here. So basically, uh, the uh, probability mass function, I, which is, remember, this is the probability when we view p prime as the probability measure on this probability space, so let's call this omega prime, f prime, p prime, the prob that's a probability space, uh, it's p prime of the set containing uh, the single outcome x. So um, because this is a finite probability space, you can put every single outcome here in a set by itself and call that an, ev an event, and therefore you can take the probability measure of that event, and we want the probability of that, uh, that outcome, to be the same as uh, the probability in this probability space, so we'll call this probability space omega f and p. We want uh, p prime of uh, the event containing the singleton x to be the same as the probability of the inverse image of that event. So in this probability space, there is a subset of outcomes which all have, which are all mapped onto x, onto little x, by uh, this random variable big X, i.e., uh, this subset here, so this is this subset, let's draw it bigger, is uh, the set of all outcomes which have, let's say, um, let's say, um, little x white marbles, because all of those are going to be mapped onto little x over here. So another one would be, for instance, uh, this would be another outcome in that um, in that uh, subset there, and they're all being mapped onto the same x. So uh, we could write this subset here as uh, x, um, the set of, uh, let's say, um, little s, which is an element of our sample space omega. So that's saying the set of all outcomes. So put in, uh, put this, make this set, and it contains outcomes of this sample space here, such that if you take uh, x of s, i.e. if you map s onto the number of white marbles it has, uh, that that is equal to little x. So that is the pre-image of x. And basically, we want the probability uh, of um, of this event containing the singleton x in this probability space to equal the probability of the pre-image in our original probability space. And that's what we mean by, um, by this inheriting the probability space structure from here. So what we want to know, the question is, is how is this, what is the probability mass function for this probability space? Um, and uh, basically we say uh, that x is hypergeometrically distributed, which tells us um, with these parameters, w, b, m, which tells us exactly what the probability. Um, basically, this has a certain probability mass function, which are about which I'm going to show you how to work out, remind you how to work out. And when it has that probability mass function, we say that it's this random variable is hypergeometrically distributed with uh, parameters w, b, and n. Okay, so if I want to work out the probability that big X is equal to some little x, how would I do it? Well. That means that we have, um, that uh, what we are trying to work out, remember, is we're trying to work out the probability of the pre-image of x. So we're trying to work out what is the probability that you have, that an outcome has x white marbles and therefore n minus x black marbles. So x white marbles, white marbles, and n minus x uh, black marbles. Okay, uh, so a quite good way of thinking about how to do this is thinking about all of the marbles having their own numbers on, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's think about uh, picking uh, marbles like this. So let's imagine putting numbers on all the white marbles. So we'll label the white marbles 1, so this is white marble 1. So imagine putting numbers onto these white marbles 1, 2, 3, 
four, etc., all the way down to, you go all the way down to W, which is the number of white marbles, and then we want to also label the black marbles. So uh, how am I going to draw the black marbles? Uh, this is going to be slightly more difficult. I'm going to draw them over here because otherwise the picture is going to get quite crowded. Okay, so we've got these black marbles here. I'm going to draw their labelling alongside them rather than on them because obviously I can't draw it on them. Right, so uh, then we'll label uh, this black marble. We'll label that W plus 1. So we're continuing our labelling from here. So we get W plus 1, W plus 2 all the way along to the last black marble, which is somewhere down here, which is W plus B black marbles, because you've got B black marble, so you'll go all the way through to W plus B is the uh, last labelling that you'll get a marble. Okay, so if we think about all possible combinations of these marbles that you could pick out, um, then uh, where we view the labelling as different, but we are not interested in the order in which you pick them out. So basically, I'm going to pick out N marbles, okay? So I'm going to pick out, uh, let's say, uh, marble. I might pick out marble uh, 1, I might pick out marble uh, W plus 1, so I'll label that above there, W plus 1. Um, I might pick out marble 2, etc. And I want to know how many different ways are there of picking out N marbles, but I'm not interested in the order. I, I'm viewing uh, this as just one outcome of the set. I don't care that I picked out uh, the first, this marble first and this marble second. I, If I'd gone this way, if I picked out marble W plus 1 first and marble 1 second and marble 2 last, I'd count that as exactly the same outcome as this. So I'm not viewing, I'm not making the order of these marbles matter. I'm just saying pick out marbles and uh, we're distinguishing marbles by their numbers. We're only interested in the numbers of marbles. Uh, basically, I'm saying how many different ways are there of picking uh, N numbers from the numbers 1 to W plus B? So I'm just interested in the numbers of the marbles. So how many ways are there of doing that? Well, that is going to be equal to W plus B choose the number you're trying to choose, which is n factorial. The reason being that, uh, remember what this is, it's w plus b factorial uh, divided by uh, n factorial divided by w plus b minus n factorial. That's the definition of w plus b choose n. And the reason that uh, this uh, answer is that is that there are W plus B options for the first marble. So the first marble I pick out could be W plus B things, so W plus B things. Then the uh, second marble could be W plus B minus one things, because there's one marble already gone here, and so on. You go all the way down to uh, W plus B, not minus N, minus N minus one, like that. And I'll bring it out a bit because uh, you are choosing n marbles, so we need to, ch uh, we need these numbers, you need n lots of these, uh, but if you go to w plus b minus n, you've got n things just there, and you'll have n plus 1 numbers in this great big product, so it should be minus n minus 1 like that, so you should, shouldn't quite get to n, the next term would be n minus n, uh, but this is the uh, minus the um, n minus 1 basically, okay, and that, that product is exactly equal to, so if I product all of those together, uh, that product is exactly equal to this portion of the factorial, of the, uh, well, of the choosing operation. And then what I'm saying is, okay, but we've overcounted when we do this, uh, because uh, this will count the different possible orders of getting the same things, i.e. it will count, the way we counted there, it will count these two things differently, because um, what it's saying is you can put W plus B things here, and then you can put W plus B minus 1 things there. So, uh, let's say we put marble 1 here and marble 2 there, that will be counted as one uh, of these, uh, but the option of putting 2 here and the option of putting 1 there will be counted as a separate one, because both of these are in here, and for uh, each of these, the other one is in the W plus B minus 1 option. So it's going to overcount basically. So we need to divide by the number of ways of rearranging all of these, of permuting these balls basically. 
where you keep the same numbers on the balls, uh, but you just permute them amongst themselves, because this is over counting by all of that, and that's n factorial, the number of ways of permuting uh, n things, basically, because we've got n balls, all with different numbers, and I'm asking how many different ways of, the, of permuting them, well, I can put n for n different balls here, I can put n minus 1 different balls here, etc., all the way down to 1, so that's divide it by n factorial to get how many different ways there are of picking uh, picking n numbers out of w plus b numbers, effectively, is what I'm doing there, which is the number of possible ways of uh, picking uh, n balls out of this bag, uh, where I'm not interested in what order you pick them out, I'm just interested in which one, which numbers you pick out, okay? Right, uh, now what we're going to say is, if we want um, the uh, probab... if we want... Uh, well, let me just draw a probability space to remind you what we're doing. So, we have got the probability space now of this bag where we have in this... So, we've got in this bag all these uh, marbles with numbers on now. So, we've got marble 1, marble 2, etc., all the way down to marble W, and then the black marbles, we've got marble W plus 1, all the way down to marble W plus B. So the outcomes in this probability space now are a sequence of numbers. So you pick marble 1, let's say you pick marble 3, marble W, marble W plus B, etc. Uh, and we don't care about the order, so we've only got what... Uh, for this, this is an outcome, but now I do not count uh, the outcome 3, 1, W is, and W plus B is different. That is the same outcome, so that's not another outcome. Uh, another outcome would be 1, 2, W, W plus B. That's a different outcome. So all possible ways of picking picking um, n balls out of this bag uh, where order does not matter and we're just looking at the numbers that you pick out are in this probability space. Okay, so what I now want to figure out is how many different ways of these we can again set up this random variable x which is going to ascribe to every single one of these the number of uh, the number of white marbles which you pick out. So this is going to ascribe a number between 0 all the way up to n and it's just going to ascribe to every outcome, uh, the total number of marbles, number of white marbles you pick out. So you pick out, and this is going to be distributed exactly the same way as our original one, because all we've, we're asking the exact same thing, we've just put labels on the marbles now to handle the problem a bit better. So this is going to be, a, a, the, a, this is the identical problem, asking what the probability that x is equal to little x is, is exactly the same problem as we had originally. Okay, uh, so what we now want to do is uh, work out uh, what's the uh, what subset of this. So if we take a value little x here, what we want to work out is what's the pre-image of this, and basically uh, we wa want to work out how many total outcomes are in this pre-image. So let's call this uh, the pre-image. I'll call it x inverse of little x. It's going to be the pre-image of little x. All of the uh, all of the outcomes which um, which are ascribed to the value little x by this random variable big x. Okay, and I'm going to cut the video short there because it's getting a bit long.